Welcome everyone. It is now 1030. Um, welcome today. We will have Ms. Bianca Negron and we will be participating in the workshop today regarding how to position and manage your brand without a budget. So today we will have Ms. B Bianca and um, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself. Perfect. Can everyone hear me? Thumbs up if we're good. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. I'm really excited um, to share with you all the information that I have today. Um, before I start, um, I sent out a worksheet that you can use to follow all the things that I'm going to share with you. Um, and I see more people connecting and I'm really happy because I do have a lot of great information for you today. Um, these are things that I use and I have been using for quite a few years. Um, so if you have the worksheet, great, because you can follow me and I will be explaining to you in what page we are in. Okay, so at the same time, I like for you to participate. So if you have any questions, any comments, feel free to use the chat or raise your hand and um, unmute yourself so I can answer those questions. So I want to start um, with this part of the presentation. I want to get to know you a little bit more um, because that's the best way for me to target a little bit more throughout the presentation um, your needs. So you're seeing my screen on today's topic, which is how to position your brand without a budget. Today, I'm going to give you tips to manage it online and offline. And I, I don't know how many of you have uh, were able to participate in the first part, but the first part of this branding series was more about personal branding, right? How can you develop your brand, which is more, it was more targeted into that part of you, right? What is those things that makes you unique? But today we're going to be talking about how we can cater that brand and expose what we are doing with apps and websites that can help us organize without a budget. Because I don't know you, but um, there's a term that they are they call that is um, that we do it all right. Sometimes we sell the product, make the product. We are the ones who create the invoices. It's a solopreneur. I don't know how many of you are solopreneur, but I have been for quite a few years and there's only 24 hours in a day, but we have to make it happen. Okay. So today we're going to be using some materials. One of them is, I want you to think outside the box. You have your worksheet and we're going to participate opening a new tab. So if you're in your computer, open a new tab, or you can go to your cell phone and open a new tab and go to menti.com, menti.com. And I know that Tasha always helps me and maybe Tasha, you can um, share with us that website on the chat, okay? Why I want you to go there because that's a great way for me to understand a little bit more of your needs, okay? Go to menti.com, okay? menti.com. And when you go to menti.com, it's going to ask you for a code, okay? Just wait there, okay? So if you have menti.com open, what I would love for you to do is the following thing, okay? Do thumbs up with your emojis so I know that you have menti.com open, okay? If you know how to use your emojis on the Zoom, just, okay. Thank you, Keisha. Okay, menti.com. If you have that open, give me thumbs up and I'll be explaining to you how we can do this and why I use menti.com is for our activities to be interactive, right? Go to menti.com. Okay, thank you, Alice, Tara, Stephen, Tara, right? And I know that if you were in my first um, presentation, I use this a lot so we can interact and learn a little bit more so if you're in menti.com, we're gonna start, okay? And what I want you to do, write your name, okay? You're gonna write your name, country or state, and tell me what you do, okay? I wanna know what, um, if you are self-employed, what is that thing, right, that you sell? What do you do? Tell me what you do. Write your name, country, state, and what do you do? Bart, Pennsylvania, unemployed. 
Thank you, Barb, for participating. I bet that today you're gonna get a lot of ideas. Okay, let's see, who else? And I know this is a new platform, so I, I understand. Susan Roberts from Virginia, self-employed communication consultant, perfect. Nancy, welcome, sell commercial insurance, Kale online retail, Lisa, Virginia professor. Oh, oh wow, hydroponic field business on the side. That's great, interesting. Alice Williamsburg, own luxury travel agency, Kara, entrepreneur staffing company. Keisha, educator, mom, turn entrepreneur, providing virtual administrative support to childcare providers. That's great. Cynthia, owner, operator, small IT business. So I have a little bit of everything. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be reading also on the chat because I have some comments. Julieta, hi, Julieta, um, Virginia Beach insurance agent, um, student, I'm learning about business and branding. Stacy, welcome. And for those asking about the code, the code should be in, on your screen is 134-134-9400 for you to participate. I already... Um, Share that there. Courtney, VA, online sales, Lavern Dillard. And sorry if I mispronounce um, a name. Um, trucking company, okay. Juana, entrepreneur in wardrobe styling and brand marketing, great. Dallas, 95, small business owner. Okay, so I have a little bit of different businesses here. Some of you are more online. Mark, Executive Director of Tiny Nonprofit. Okay, great. And thank you for sharing all of this. Um, telling Acquisition Specialist for Nonprofit Organization, Janet, welcome. So it's great to hear a little bit of what you do. So what I'm seeing here is that mainly all of you have a company or starting or have an idea. Um, so I have women traveling here craft businesses. And this is a great way also to connect with other people, okay? And see what others are doing and how you can create connections. So thank you for sharing with me. Um, Lamin, agriculture and e-commerce, interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do, I want to know your niche. When we're going to be talking about a niche, okay? I read some of you. So some of you are in retail. Some of you are in the niche of education. It is important that you know which is your niche, okay? Consulting. So I want you to write your niche. You don't have to write the whole business like you uh, mentioned, right? Before, good, niche education. What I want to see is what niches we have today. And niche is that area that you specializes that you specialize in. Stacy, sport and photography, perfect. Community relations, solo woman over 50, great. Skincare, oh, we have a variety. Luxury travel, huh. And I'm gonna make connections here, um, thinking out loud, okay? Luxury travel, that will be interesting with a person who has the niche of woman over 50. Maybe they can do something together. And I see education and early childhood education, fashion and marketing, t-shirt cart mark making and embroidering, um, flatbed and driving over the road, transporting, staffing, consulting, training, good. And part of this exercise is to see if you know your niche, okay? Um, and Stacy, thank you. Over here in the chat, we have other people sharing and Stacy is, um, inviting other people that if you're in LinkedIn, you can connect with her and that will be something great that everybody can do. I'm on LinkedIn too. Um, Brie, Virginia, private investigator and birth postpartum doula, perfect and t-shirt brand. So there's other people with t-shirts too, interesting. Small business consulting, craft and designed, okay? So whenever we're talking about your niche, you have to know which one is your niche, okay? And that's gonna be important today that you are really aware of what are you're selling, okay? Because that helps us a lot, create a great product. And also at the same time, use the correct apps in order for us to have a better organization with our brand. 
So the next question that I want um, for you to participate is, share with me what challenges are you facing in your business? Is it organization? Is it making money? Is it booking clients? What is that that you might say, you know what, I'm having a difficult time, challenges with this. I'm the only person handling all of this and I need help with this. So share with me, what is that? What is that challenge? And I'm going to keep reading while you type your challenge. Andrea is sharing with us that she's on LinkedIn, finding my niche in general notary work, continuing compliance evaluations and small business consulting. Stacey, how to start a business and what and what makes what I'm doing different from everyone else? Great, Stacey. That's one of the main things that we have to think of whenever we are developing our business. So I'm going to read some of your challenges to see if there's anyone who is um, facing the same. I'm a pro at handling clients' social media, but not my own. Okay. You know what? That happens a lot. You provide a service, but then it's hard for you to follow or um, whatever you're preaching. Sometimes it's hard to do that because we don't have time because we are helping the clients. So I hear, I, I read here, reaching new clients, booking consistently clients, organization and marketing, marketing cost. Yes, that could be um, a headache there. Marketing to a market that is struggling financially right now. Interesting, managing tasks, marketing, finding clients, solopreneur, new to social media. My challenge is getting steady customers. Okay, being a startup funding and marketing, marketing. So I hear a lot of marketing. Branding is off target. Our name is completely wrong, huh? Interesting. So maybe a rebranding um, should be part of, of that um, solution. I'm starting my blog and I feel very insecure. Okay. And I'm going to keep reading on the chat and let's see. And finding a vendor for my t-shirts, finances, delegating. Interesting. Reducing the scope of my business. Focus on less not to spread myself to think. Andrea, we're going to be talking about that. That's really important because I used to do that. How to do a recruitment brand to attract talent. That's important too. Start a business and what makes what I'm doing different. So we're going to be talking a little bit about everything here. And maybe on the next um, couple of um, marketing sales. So what I'm reading, mainly everybody's struggling with marketing, uh, finding new clients, and organization. So we're gonna be talking about this today. I'm gonna be showing you some apps on what things that you can do. So I wanna know also what apps you're using to manage your brand, any apps that you're using. And when I say apps, it could be websites, things that you use your day-to-day -day in your operating business to make your brand known out there, but at the same time for you to have a better flow of your business, okay? And Andrea, I relate to your comment on the chat. I'm, and Andrea comments is, I'm trying to provide 10 services um, instead of focusing on two or three. 10 is way too much, uh, I agree. Okay, Stacy, WordPress, okay, good. Um, send folio for my photograph website, okay. Um, Bree, I need to know which apps are available. Okay, and we're gonna be talking about those today, some of them, okay? And it will depend on your niche, some of them. Asana, okay, for organization, Google Suite, Trello, Wix, Facebook, good. Squarespace, Dubsado, Canva. Yes, we're gonna be talking about Canva, Wix. Nothing yet, I'm starting my blog, okay. And we're gonna be talking word of mouth, okay? No apps, Canva, Eventbrite, MailChimp, good. Um, not so much your website. Okay, Shopify, yes. WordPress, Instagram, Facebook, Canva. Okay, I want to see, um, um, these comments are great for me because I want to see how familiar you are with different apps that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I use a website and that's it. Not to, okay, so some of us, we don't have time to do social media, okay, or it's a little bit difficult. So we're going to be talking about all of that. Yes, I'm a fan of Canva. I don't know if you have any knowledge in Canva. <clears throat> Sorry, but I love Canva. I do many of my things in Canva and I'm going to be showing you that today. So thank you for sharing with me all your info. 
I'm going to be sharing some of the apps that you have shared and others. Okay, so by this, I want to know a little bit of your expectation today. What do you expect to learn today? And while you write that, um, I'll share with you a little bit of me. I have been in business since 2008. I created a recruiting agency in Puerto Rico, and I has I have been a solopreneur for um, a lot of um, years. And I will say that about six, seven years ago, everything changed. I got to understand why I was not making money. And I will say that about five years ago, I started making money. Um, and I think Andrea was sharing that she has a lot of different services. I used to do that. Now I only provide services to a few and that has, has helped me a lot specialize because then whenever you specialize, you can increase your, um, and I'm reading some of them. You can increase the, the amount you charge. Okay. So I'll share with you some tips on that. So expectation for today, build your brand, pivoting, free tools. Yes, free tools. We're going to be working on that. Low cost marketing, um, build your brand, best branding techniques, messaging. Okay. And saying no, we'll work on that. Okay. Orientation. So whenever you see this cloud, the word marketing is the one that is coming up, right? Bigger than others. That means that everybody is looking for that. Okay. So we will be working on that. Um, and Stacy, um, yeah, that's part of it, right? To share what we have learned. I have fall many times and I have lost a lot of money. So for me, sharing the information, that's the moral important thing. So multiple streams of income. Okay. Um, that's really interesting. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to change my screen to my PowerPoint presentation. And we're going to start with that. Have your worksheet ready with you. Okay. So you can start taking notes. I hope we are ready with that. So I'm going to show you my screen and we are going to start. And let me just be sure that you can see my screen. And this is going to happen today a lot because I'm going to be jumping from different screens and Tasha, I'm going to um, ask you to help me on that because I'm going to be jumping. I, I should be able to handle that because I have learned a little bit of it. Okay. But in, in, in case something happens. Okay. So Tasha in the chat is helping me. Um, if you need a worksheet, Tasha can help you and we're going to start. Okay. So we're going to learn how to manage your brand. Why? Because we need to use different application, right? System and strategies to maintain a good, um, credibility, reputation and distinction in the market. What are the things that happen out there? We go out there and say who we are, what we do, and the worst things that can happen to a possible client, you know what it is? to have a bad experience with us. I don't know how many of you have had this um, experience that you tell someone that you want the service and they don't have a website, that you tell someone how much it is and they don't know the price, that they can send you a link, that the way to make a payment is difficult. So all of these things we have to think about because that first experience is everything for the client. So what sets you apart? And this is part of um, some of your questions. Think of that set us apart from other brands. And I have these three. For me, is the most important one, the image, okay? And whenever we're talking about image is how do you project yourself? And this is the thing. I don't know if you're aware of, but maybe you're selling pens, but the name of your company is out there and your name too. So people are going to be looking for the name of your company, but also your name. Okay. So I hear sometimes um, business owners saying, you know what, my Facebook, my social media is private. Um, clients, they don't know about it. Clients do go out there and look for you. Okay. Under your name and your business. So the question is in terms of business and yourself, how are you projecting yourself? What are people seeing or what do you want them to see? That's really important. Service. How will they remember you? People are looking for an experience. And I always try, 
um, to give examples. And for me, Starbucks is always the best one. I always say that Starbucks, I don't know how many of you are a fan of Starbucks. I'm from Puerto Rico. And right now, for you to know, I'm on vacation. Uh -huh. I'm on vacation. And the funny thing is, I can still manage my business because of all the things that I'm going to show you. Okay. So in Puerto Rico, we drink really strong coffee. So Starbucks coffee eh, for us is not that great, but still, you know why they can charge a lot for a coffee because they sell you an experience through their service. And those are the best brands. Okay. The ones who generate emotions. And whenever we start thinking of the service, this is the question, how will they remember you with your service? Okay. Do you provide a great service or you go beyond? Okay. Do you just provide the service and forget about the client or how can you create a referral system, a follow-up system? Okay. Or give them a little perk at the end. Something that I love to do with my coaching business is I um, sometimes I have clients for three, four months and I will give them a free session on the fourth or fifth month. So that's really important to start thinking about. And the next one is connection. What emotions do you generate with your client? Are they happy to see you? Do they want to book another um, service with you? And everything is about emotions. And if you want to start thinking about emotions, just think why you tend to buy certain things because they generate a feeling to you, okay? And you want to um, have that same feeling again and again, okay? So these three are key on how we can set our service or brand, okay? Differently than others. So with this, we're going to continue and we're going to start with our niche. And if you want to start um, working with this, this is on your page um, one, right? Um, page two, sorry, that says define your niche. Many of you were able to answer that whenever I ask you. So that's great. Okay. I'm in the niche of consulting and training. Okay. So defining your niche allows you to stop selling to everyone and selling all type of services, okay? So that's really important to start thinking on. And whenever we define your niche, we have to think, right? How are we gonna do that? And if you do not define your niche, you're selling blindly. You're selling to everyone. You're losing energy, time, effort, money, okay? So key questions, whenever you are defining your niche, what problem does your product or service solve? Okay. What is that solution that you're bringing to the, to the people who are buying to you? So for example, I read some of you are designing t-shirts or selling um, pens. What solution or um, problem you solve them? If there's more people doing it, what is that thing that sets you apart? Can they do it online? Is it um, easy the way the payment is? Do you have a different strategy than others? Also, which customers will buy, right? Will buy your products. Um, which customers, right? Your products will be attracted to the most. Sometimes we're looking for everyone, but you know what? Sometimes your product will be more catered to high-end customers or your services will cater more to everyone or just to moms, okay? Or just to families. <clears throat> so this is the thing, whenever we're developing um, a niche, we have to be sure that we already know who are the customers. My customers are people who are developing their businesses, right? And they want to create their brand or professionals who wants to increase or have better um, career opportunities, okay? So whenever you have that set, it's easier to sell and market yourself. And I think that sometimes we have a struggle with money. I don't know how many of you, I used to struggle, struggle with money. And it's a conversation that some, I used to have this um, challenge in putting or setting a price, okay? So this is the thing, where can you get the most income from? 
if we're going to be entrepreneurs and business owners, this is how we should think, okay? When I used to be in the education field in Puerto Rico, I'll be sincere. I didn't, I was not making money because in the education field where I was working, there was not money there. And many of the things that I used to do, they had to be um, volunteering or I will have to set the price down for schools to buy the product, okay? And what I did, I changed my niche. Now I'm making more money, but you know what? I still love the education field. So usually what I do is I can offer a service for them that is more, is lower because I'm passionate about that, but I have another service that can help me have that income that I need, okay? Am, am I making sense? And I know that sometimes we have that conversation with money, okay? How much I'm gonna charge, oh wow, that's too much. Oh, I'm scared, maybe the person doesn't buy it. But this conversation, we have to have that um, in order for us to have a great brand, okay? So with that, okay, let's talk a little bit of image, okay? And whenever we're talking about image, okay, we're gonna be talking, and I like this phrase from Sig Sigler that says, don't be afraid to present your true self to the world. Authenticity is the foundation of success. And the best brands are the ones who are authentic and they can connect with people. And now is where this part gets real good, okay? If you want to showcase your brand and you don't have money, okay? And I know that sometimes we struggle with that. And Brie, um, I, I'm, if you are sharing with me, that's great, okay? Because I can um, give you information. I don't want to charge too much. Okay, so this is the question. And later on, we can talk this at the end. Whenever you have a business, you have to think, you know what? What's the salary that I want in a year? I want 2,500. I want 30,000. Um, I want um 50,000 okay so you have to divide that salary into months okay and then into your services so you know how much you need to sell in terms of salary so you get paid but also at the same time you have to think of all the other things that you have to pay cell phone computer technology all those different things because if not at the end of the day you're going to be an entrepreneur that is not making money that is just um, going day by day to see what's going on and to see what happens. Um, and a great entrepreneur have a great service, but they also have to charge and have an idea of that. Um, yes, Stacey, you can look at competitors' prices and you can start with that and start thinking, you know what, they're charging this um, because they have this service. So how my services um, differ that has a difference between them and how can I charge the same or more, okay? Um, so I'm gonna start with how we can showcase your brand. The first thing that we're going to do, and you have that in your sheet, all these websites, okay? I'm gonna go live on these so you can have an idea. So I'm gonna talk about how we can showcase your brand in terms of pictures, bio, using LinkedIn, using social media, using your web page and email signature. So I'm gonna start with this one, okay? Whenever we're out there in social media, we need to be sure that we have a good profile picture, especially LinkedIn, okay? And this is a great um, analyzer app, okay? And I'm gonna share you the screen so you have an idea how it looks, okay? So for example, you can go to Snap, right? Com and you have all these um, links on your worksheet and you upload your picture and it's going to give you a score, okay? In this picture, I have 70 out of 100 and here it's giving me, is is analyzing my picture, how it looks, if I have a good smile, the jawline, um, here it's telling me the squinch, everything is telling me how the resolution, the composition looks, okay? The brightness, sharpness, and you might say, why I need this? People buy and connect, okay, with what they see, okay? And having a great picture is important. And this picture that you use, it can be used in LinkedIn. It could be used in your Facebook page. 
also in your website when you explain that you are the CEO or the owner. So this is a great way to start analyzing how your picture looks like and which one you want to use, okay? And Brie, um, I don't want to have to use social media to promote my brand. And you know what? Different people use different ways, okay? It is going to depend on your niche. So from this one, I'm going to show you a different one. There's another option, right? Whenever we are doing our brand, all of you need a bio, a professional biography, a summary of who you are and what you do, why you should have this. First of all, if you're going to have a website and you're going to say that you are the owner, they want to know a little bit about you, who you are, um, why you're doing this. And it's important to have it ready, especially those who provide consulting and training, because sometimes we need to share this information whenever we're going to um, do maybe a speaking conference or something like that. So I'm showing you here my example of my bio and it's done in Canva. Okay. And if you see, it's like a summary of who I am. It has my education, certifications, memberships, collaborations, and my contact information, okay? The great thing of having this in Canva is that, for example, I'm on vacation, and if somebody tells me, you know what, Bianca, you're going <clears> to <throat> you're gonna provide this coaching session or this training, I need people to know who you are, I need to read something, I just click that link and I send that to them, okay? So for this, it's um, narrated in third person, okay? It's like if we have a resume, right? But as entrepreneurs, yes, you should have a resume done, but this is another type of resume that talks about who you are, what you do, why you are in business, okay? I wanna see if you can do thumbs up. Who has a bio already of who you are, what you do, a little bit of you as an entrepreneur? Who has something like this already um, ready to send if somebody, Keisha? Okay, perfect. And I'm, I'm, okay. And for those of you asking me, this is on Canva. This is a, this is something that I made on my own on Canva, but Canva has different um, templates that you can use, okay? You can use this. Okay, Lavern, will you share your slides with us? Um, I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, I'll later talk to Tasha and we can work on this, okay? So this is a great way to have because you can use this in many different ways and I'm going to show you how, okay? So start thinking on this. And now we're going to be talking about, right? We're talking about your image. Now we're going to talk about reputation, okay? Yes, um, Brie is being recorded right now. Yes, then later on you can have this. So I don't know how many of you have heard of Brand Yourself, okay? Brand Yourself is an app that is, it has a free version and obviously they're going to sell you something more, okay? I have been using Brand Yourself for more than five, six years. And basically something that it helps brand yourself with your, it's your reputation. So I'm gonna show you how it looks and what you can do with it, okay? So bear with me because um, I don't like to stay logged in here. Um, so this is what I'm gonna show you about brand yourself. Look at this. Why brand yourself is so important. Nowadays out there, right? In the media, in, in the internet, your name is being out, right? It's being out there. So maybe there's another person that has your same name and you go like, huh, no. Well, for example, when I started using Brand Yourself, that's how I learned that there was another Bianca Negron. Um, she lives in New York. She is a graphic designer. And many of the links that I was trying to create, she already had the name. So I had to change mine. And I learned that using this. So basically the free version that I have allows me to come here, right? And take a look of all the links of all the news that are coming up with Bianca Negron. And I get to come here and say, you know what? This is me, this is not me. 
And you might say, why I need this? You know why? Because out there, somebody can have your same name and maybe they're using social media for a different purpose. And this is what allows your name to really connect with who you are and what you do. And when people go to Google and write your name, it has a better chance of connecting them with the real you. Does that make sense? I hope you're seeing right the pattern why this is so important to understand and to have. So I'm going to show you how you can do this. Here you can come, look, and clean your social media. Again, I have the free version, okay? So for example, it tells me this is you. I have it in Spanish here. Um, that's why maybe you don't get to understand some of it. But it's asking me about six months ago, somebody posted this. Is this you? Right? And I can see that it's my picture. So I can either say ignore or delete or yes, this is me. If you want to clean a little bit more your social media here, you will have to pay. But there's another thing. It gives your reputation report. Okay? It's like your credit, um, right? We all do like credit report and check how our credit is out there. So basically brand yourself is our credit out there that is evaluating our reputation, okay? Um, and something that I like about them is the following thing that you can do here. And I'm gonna show you in build personal brand and look what you can do with brand yourself. It is free, okay? You can create, okay, like a page. And it will, since I have the free version, okay, again, it will be my name, biancanegron.brandyourself.com. I will go here and let me be sure that you can see it. And look, I have, in other words, a bio. I created this bio with right, my information and I can share this to other people that may ask me who you are, what you do. Hey, here it is. I don't have a website, but you can come here and see this, okay? Can you see the value? Now, can you understand what I told, why I told you that you need a bio first and then do this? Because everything is copy paste, copy paste, okay? Even you can target it to your client, okay? And you can come here and change it. Okay, so I hope this is bringing you value and start thinking how I can brand myself. And like I mentioned, all of these are free. I use the free version. So I'm gonna keep showing you more, okay? Are you guys with me? I'm going too fast um, because I tend, oh, we're Lisa, thank you <laughs> uh -huh, for sharing that with me, okay? So perfect, we're gonna continue. And from brand yourself, I'm gonna show you what we can do on LinkedIn, okay? LinkedIn is great if we have a business more catered to consulting, training, professionals, right? To expose what we do, even selling to companies, okay? There's this link and it's coming up, okay? That is a sell, social selling um, index. I don't know if you're aware of this, but basically they're comparing your profile in LinkedIn, okay? with other professionals that are in the same business, okay? Same network. So I did this long ago, so I have to do it again. Um, but basically it's telling me that my social selling index is 21%, okay? And my rank is 4%. And here is telling me a little bit more. And you might say, what is this? I don't get it. Okay, so four components that the social index consider is how you have established your professional brand on LinkedIn. And the way you they analyze this is your profile. Is it complete? What do you share? The content, all of that. So they're taking in consideration all of that. Um, Stacy, you just go to Google and um, you can type social selling index and it has a link. And I am... I'm a little bit concerned because I think about four or five months ago, they were going to start charging this, okay? Um, but so far, it has been free. So if you can go and do this ASAP, um, it will be great because I know that LinkedIn is increasing different things and they're going to start selling things, okay? So here, it's telling me that I have 10.02 on finding the right people. And you might say, what are the right people? Prospect in less time. 
using efficient search and research tools. Okay, how people engage with insights, right? Is giving me a score and building relationship. In my case here, when I see this 70 out of 100, I know that I have to work a little bit more on finding the right people and engaging. For me, sometimes it's hard because I, I, I work, um, so it's difficult to go to LinkedIn post and then keep up with the comments, okay? And I have a baby, a one-year-old, and I see that Lisa over there, you guys have over there a baby. I know that sometimes being an entrepreneur and doing all of this is hard. What I tend to do is maybe at night I go and, you know, say, hi, thank you for your comment. And I try to do that at least three times in a week, okay? So we have to find that time because if we don't connect with people in social media and we are in social media, they're going to feel neglected, okay? And that's part of the experience. Here is telling me, right, um, a little bit of people in my industry, right? Sales professionals in HR because that's my niche, okay? My rank is 21. It has dropped since last week. You know why? Because I'm on vacation. I haven't been posting or commenting. I need a little bit of break, okay? People in my network, they're telling me a little bit more about how they're ranking. I'm the top four. I have been down and you see, I already explained why. So it's giving me that opportunity of understanding what I need to do and how I can do that. Um, Mark, you did it. That's great. 64. That's great. Okay. So thank you, Mark, for doing it. So and sharing that with us um, to see how it works. So it's a great tool because you maybe are um, saying, you know what, I need to increase sales. I need to connect with people. Here, they're telling you what you need to do and it's free, okay? You just have to invest a little bit of time. Um, you know, Brie, um, I'm gonna be sincere. All the things that I'm showing you, I do it for free, okay? Um, I'll explain the ones that I pay, okay? Um, I wouldn't say to invest, just try it. my recommendation in all the different apps and website, try it for free first. And then you analyze if you need this or you don't, okay? So from here, we're gonna go to a next one, okay? And it's Linkalyze, okay? And it's showing up, okay? Linkalyze. This one might be going through changes. And if you see, this is my profile in um, December 8, 2020. Okay. This is something that they launched to start checking how it, it was working. So we have to double check how is it coming up because Linkalyze basically is saying, you know what? People on LinkedIn, they can make money too. How can they make money? It depends with how many people they connect their brand out there. So Linkalyze is analyzing your LinkedIn profile and is saying, for example, that I have 2.16K followers engagement per post for me, that's really low, but still is telling me, you know what? Your worth of posting something for someone else is like $20, $29. So you say, I don't get it. So for example, if I want to say, you know what, ODU, Hire me and I'm going to post this information about you. And they might say how much it is. That's how branding works, right? People who are influencers, this is basically how you become an influencer, right? Well, $29, I can pr um, promote that. So this one is for those of you who are thinking, how can I become an influencer? Here is telling you a little bit about it. So this is for me in, in December, okay? Likes, comments, it gets to analyze it and the skills that you have, okay? And one of the things that I love about this and something that I learned with this, I don't know if you have LinkedIn, um, but basically is saying that you should, they recommend, and I'm, I'm reading here, we recommend that you don't republish for the next 44, 48 hours. So something that I have learned with my marketing um agent is that she tells me if you post in Facebook today, try not to post tomorrow. Why? Because you want that cycle to start and end and give people time to see it and to like it and to comment. Sometimes we think that we need to post two, three times per day or every single day. And what we're doing is that we are not letting the metrics go 
to see the flow, right? In how people are connecting with what we're sharing. So this is more about LinkedIn. And now I'm going to share with you something else that I don't know if you use, but LinkedIn has a QR code. So if you want to tell people, hey, come and connect with me, do a screenshot of your QR code, okay? Maybe share that QR code in your emails. Maybe share that in your website, okay? Those are different techniques that you can use to increase that brand awareness of where you are. Um, Stacy, optimal times to post. I'm going to be sincere. I'm not, um, I don't specialize in marketing, but um, that will depend on your niche, okay? A lot and the target customer. Um, so there's a lot of information in social media that they can um, give you some ideas on how to do that, okay? Um, so that's information on LinkedIn. It's always great to have a profile. And like I mentioned before, your bio can be part of your LinkedIn profile, okay? You just have to tweak it to that type of client, okay? Now, email signature, okay? Whenever we're talking about um, our image, our brand, we all should have an email signature, okay? There's different ways on how do we, we can do this, okay? I use about.me, I've been using about.me for quite a few years, and I'm gonna tell you why I like it. I can have a picture, right, and the link. And this is the interesting part of it. Look at this. When people click on about.me, what happens? They can go to a website that is about me. Uh, again, I have the free version, okay? I have been using the free version for more than five, six years. Remember that I told you that you need a bio? You need the bio because you will input here your bio. You can tweak it, you can change it, okay? And the thing about this is, again, that is free, okay? And you get to decide how you want it, okay? Here, the call to action is people to visit my website. But you can change. And when I say call to action is every time people go to your website, go to your social media, they want to know what's next. Tell them what to do. They don't know what to do. So you have to tell them. So here I'm telling them, go to my website. They can click here, right? And it's going to take them to my website. And I, I don't want to spend more time there because I want to explain a little bit more on, on this. So the great thing is that you can add a custom domain, but here, hear me this. If you're going to do this, you're going to have to pay, okay? And the way it looks a free version, I'm going to click here on top. Basically, it says about.me being a grown, okay? That's it. That's how it looks. The other great thing about the about.me is that here it has a little bit about you and you can include all the things that you want, social media, WhatsApp, WordPress, all those links, okay? So usually what I tell my clients when they tell me, you know, we are, what Bianca, I can't have a website. I don't have the money right now. So I always tell them, you know what? Do an about.me page. Just include your social media and tell them a little bit about your business. Again, just a good picture, okay? have a call to, um, to action and just do that, okay? So they have a place to go and see that you're real, okay? Um, another thing about this is that whenever you send an email, people are gonna click on that, right? On your URL. About.me will send you weekly reports and will say how many people will have visited your, your link, okay? So that's great because you know if people are going or not visiting, okay? So I'm going to continue and I'm going to show you another um, signature that you can use and it's Y stamp, okay? The Y stamp signature, it won't have a website or a link that people can go to. It's just a simple signature, okay? It will look like this one on the bottom. It can have a picture of you. You can add your name, position, and all the different information that people will need in order to contact you, okay? So that's another option. Again, free version. Whenever I say free version, that's why it has here on the bottom, create your own email signature because it comes with that, okay? So I'm gonna keep working and giving you more information, okay? 
So I already told you a little bit of the social media and, and let me go here because I'm not gonna go, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna focus specifically on social media. Social media will depend on your service, okay? So there's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. It depends on your niche, how you wanna sell, okay? But also we all need a web page. So either you can use about.me for now if you don't have a lot of money to work with, but you can use um, Wix, WordPress, or Squarespace. Um, I have been using for a lot of years um, GoDaddy. I don't know if a lot of you have heard of it. Um, so there are different ways that you can do the website. The thing with the website is to always pay attention and give maintenance, do the maintenance, okay? And... With that, I'm going to start with services, right? What we want to do with our brand is to offer something that is memorable, right? That people can remember us. And I like this phrase from Anonymous and it says, if people like you, they listen to you. But if they trust you, they will do business with you. Okay. And that's what we need to do. So those of you who started um, telling me, you know what? I have a different services or I have a lot of services. This is what we have to do, okay? I always explain um, this metaphor, right? We have to divide our services in two ways. Hershey's. How many of you have eaten Hershey's? I think that a lot of us have eaten Hershey's. And where can we find them? We can find them, right? Walmart, Walgreens, a gas station. Everybody has Hershey's. But what happens? There's another chocolate that I like to use in this um, comparison and is the Godiva. What happens with Godiva chocolates? We can find them everywhere, not maybe in a gas station. There are specific places where we can find a Godiva chocolate. And whenever we are creating services, we need to think about these two chocolates. Hershey's, a service that everybody can buy with a good price that is accessible to everyone, but also a service that is type is kind of Godiva type that is accessible only for some. Because maybe the, um, the amount that they have to pay is higher. Maybe the service is unique, okay? It's more tailored to something or to someone, okay? So for example, a service that can be a Hershey service. And if you want, um, let me see. If you want, you can share that with me services that are Hershey type, maybe a PDF that people can download and pay for, that's accessible to everyone, right? What are those things that you can think of that it can be accessible to everyone? That can be something that people might say, you know what, $4.99, I can do that. $5.99, $10.99 is easy, something that I can pay for, and still I can see the value of it, okay? Um, I want to read um, on the chat if you have any idea in terms of your business, what can be a Hershey type service? And then a Godiva type service. Right now, I will say in my business, um, when I do coaching one-on-one, -on -one, it's kind of a Godiva um, service because I know that it has the cost, right? is a little bit higher and I can divide myself in many ways, right? So whenever someone hires me for a coaching session, I'm there for that hour for maybe three, four, five, six months. So that's going to be kind of a Godiva service. But I can sell a webinar, right? I can have a PDF. Now I created, I have a book that it's out in the market. So that's a Hershey type because it's accessible to everyone. And I'm going to be reading, um, if you have t-shirts, maybe a shirt that is more comfortable, like a nice cut and blend or something. Yes, Stacey, that everyone can buy, right? For it, but if you have a shirt that is more tailored, you have a special, special message, it's more um, customized, that's a good diva service. Andrea, Hershey, general notary work offered to everyone. Yes, general notary work for medical facilities. Oh, okay. That's a Godiva service. Good. Um, Brie, people want them, but I want more color and design. Um, I think that I, I got lost in that one. Maybe you can explain to me a little bit more. Um, 
of that. But this part, what I'm sharing and what I want you to start thinking is how can I have, we're talking about her clothes. Okay, okay. Yes, so people want them, Ambri, and let me know if I'm reading correctly. People want them, but maybe they want something with more color and design that's more Godiva. General travel advice on Facebook, Instagram. Yes, that's her. She versus personalized travel consultation. Great. I'm, I'm liking what I'm reading because you're getting the concept and this is what we have to do. You know why? Because maybe whenever you're selling three, four Godiva services that are premium services, you're done for the month, maybe for the six months or maybe for the year, okay? And then you are not rushing in selling and selling and selling and selling, okay? So that's really important to think of. Um, Stacy, if we're in charge of Under Armour, then having a cotton shirt, which is Hershey versus the dry fit shirt, which is like Godiva, yes. So this is the thing, the Hershey part in terms of service is gonna give you a revenue, right? An income, mainly monthly, okay? But then the Godiva, you're not gonna sell that every month, but if you have a target and you do every month, every two, you're set because you know that that's a high ticket price item that can help you a lot, okay? Um, and I'm he I'm getting some, Tasha, thank you. Tasha is sharing with me some of the questions that maybe I don't get to answer because I'm trying to do the, the workshop and this, and you know what, Tasha? I'm gonna be sharing some of the questions to see if I can answer these. Um, always heard that people can get paid for their posts online and was curious about that. Thank you, Stacey. This, that was a great way to on Linkalyze that can help you. Um, does Linkalyze track across all social media? No, Linkalyze only work with um, LinkedIn. Are there optimal time to post? I think I answered that one. Um, but where I can find an expenses distributor? Okay, Bree, that's a great question. It will depend your niche. I'm not familiar with your niche, but you know what? Um, those are things that you should start researching. And for me, Google is the best way. Maybe I can, you can share with me a little bit more whenever we're done to see how I can help you brainstorm on that. Okay. Um, so always remember that Hershey type of service and Godiva that will help you a lot. So now we're going to be talking about how we can organize our brand, your brand. So organization, we're going to be talking about that and we, I'm going to show you to do list and close. Okay. Those are apps. Calendar, you need a calendar, Calendly. Okay. I'm going to show you that, especially if you're working with one-on-one -on -one clients. Billing, I don't know how you do your billing. There's QuickBooks, there are many others. PayPal, you can use that, but I'm going to show you two different ones that can help you have a different idea of what other things are there in the market. You should have a service menu, okay? What you offer, especially those who are freelancers and offer services. Proposals, you should have that ready. You should not be waiting for the client to tell you, I need a proposal. And the worst answer is, you know what? I need to work on that. Um, I don't have one ready. Or you're looking out there for one example. You should have at least one example that you can tailor out depending on the client. And the last one, especially for those freelancers that they don't know um, what will be that rate that they have to um, include or how much to charge, there's um, Referral Rock that can help you have an idea of that. And I'm going to start with organization. And right now I'm on the page three, if I'm not mistaken, okay, we're going to organize our brand. So organization, I have been using Todoist for quite a while. I know that some of you are using Asana, maybe Monday. Um, there's different apps. So far, I, I have liked using this one, okay? It is easy. I have the app on my cell phone, but I can use it here on my computer. I have an inbox that it tells me all the things that I have to do, okay? But I can just go here to today, right? And it tells, I put every, every day, I get a client something to do, I write it, right? To do list, right? So I put it by day, I put it by time. Something that I like is that 30 minutes before the event, it will send me a reminder. I have it set like that. So you send me like a text, okay? 
And that's something that I like to do. Um, and something that has this feeling of whenever we're working in coaching, that motivation and engagement is fulfilled when we get to maybe click on something and see something that we have accomplished. So what I like about to do is, um, is the following thing. So showing the sign in. Um, do you see my screen? Let me see because Keisha is, okay. So you're seeing my to-do list screen right now. I'm on to-do list. Okay, perfect. Um, so basically today, I have it in Spanish, right? But today, July 28th is today. I says here, workshop ODU. So I'm done. I'm going to click here and it will go away, right? You see? And it's like that feeling like, oh, it's completed. And something that I like to, to see is that here is giving me, right? How many tasks I have completed. So something that I like about this is that, you know what, it's telling me overdue. So I don't know you, but I'm a person who's high in options. And I tend to do a lot of lists and of a lot of things to do per day. And you know what's, what is something that I have learned with to do is that I'm, I want to be an overachiever. And I try to set myself for failure because I keep adding more to do is for the day. And then I go like, you know what? This wasn't for today. This could have been done in two or three days. It's, it's not for today. So something that I have seen with to do is I myself is that I'm creating myself with um, a lot of stress. So for example, I'm not gonna do this today. So something that I can do is take this here and put it here, okay? And I can change it by day. Something that you can do is you can create your own projects, okay? So it depends, right, what you have to do. So these are different projects that I work with. So I get to divide them, okay, and label them with colors. So here I can see all the things that I have. You can see them, right? When I'm free, all of that. So I love doing this. And let's say I need to change something. I only do this. I go here. Right. Let me let me go back. Oh, and you can do all of this. You can add a label, set priority, put the alarm, all of that. Um, I'm paying for this one. OK, I started with a free version. I noticed that it was really good for me. So I started paying for it. I don't remember how much. OK, but you can check on that. But it's a great way that um, you can organize your day to day. OK. So Stacy, put in your information to sign up for the service. Okay, if you can clarify that for me so I can help you with that, okay? So this is to do it. Now I'm gonna share with you another one that I used to pay for this one. You can do the free version to see if you like it, okay? So this is close, okay? So basically, I thought someone was lost. Okay, thank you, Stacy, for that, helping others. I won't go in, um, but close. It's a great tool for those who manage different websites, okay? Different um, emails account, different social media. So basically close, what is doing this is closing the gap of all of that information that you have out there. And they're just giving you one spot where you can manage all of that. And basically close is what we called a CRM, um, CRM client relationship management system. Usually to have a client relationship management system, you should hire maybe someone. And if you're asking to yourself, what is a client relationships um, management system? Basically a CRM is what helps you manage all the different social media, all the different emails that you have, right? And it keeps track of when I need to connect with Lisa, with when I need to connect to connect with Tasha, when I need to connect with Stacy, And he's even telling me, you know what? It has passed four months and you haven't sent an email to this person. So you go like, oh, wow, I have to do this. It is a great way to maintain that client relationship that you want, okay? I used the free version for a couple of months and then I used the upgraded version, um, but I stopped because I was doing more other things manually, okay? But it's a great way, like for example, I don't know how many of you, I have like four different um, email addresses 
I have a Gmail account. I have the, the coaching spot. I have Bianca Negron. So in close, all those emails come in one page, right? All of them come in once. So it's a group, great um, way to organize all your different social media, all your different um, email accounts. So let's see, are we doing okay? Are you learning? Yeah, okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna continue, okay, with the organization piece. And let's see, let me, now it doesn't wanna go to my, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm on my PowerPoint again, and this is one of my favorite ones. I love this one. This is Calendly, okay? There's a free version, but there's a catch, okay? And I'm using right now, I upgraded it, um, this part. Calendly allows you for clients to book a session or a meeting with you. The free version will only allow for you to create one, let's say one, and I'm going to show it to you now how it looks like. Okay, there we go. I know it's in Spanish, but I will explain it, okay? So here right now, I have five different services that people can book. There's a consulting um, to, for people to consult their services, a follow-up coaching session, I do sometimes pro provide a free consulting um, appointment. I work with a tool that is called MindSonar and I have to do the debriefings. And I also provide a service for parents um, that I work with their teens choosing a career. So you see all of them have different colors. Okay, these two are alike because I still work with the same um, tool. And basically, if you have the free version, you can't have four different calendars. You will only have one, okay? So if you only have one service, that will be something great to use. This is the thing. How will people use this, okay? This is what your client will look like. Um, they're, um, whenever they click, this is what they will see, okay? It explains how many minutes. It explains how it will be done. It's a brief summary. You will have to write all of this. And right now they can see, right, what is available because I haven't updated my calendar. Let me see if I can go back and show you um, another one. You see, there's different time frames because I get to decide how long the meeting will be. Okay. Here is an hour. So basically when people, and then you can change the time frame, right? Um, basically, whenever they come here, they're going to click on a date and they get to choose, okay, what hour. And you are the one who makes that happen. I'm available, let me see, on the 30th. And look, people can book 3.30 or 6.30. That's what I have available. And this is the great thing. I don't know if you notice every time I was changing the calendar, and this one is an hour. And you know what? It's not on the phone. It's a web conference. And you know what, since I have, I use Zoom, Zoom is already connected to this. So I don't have to create a room or a meeting for this. Automatically, Calendly connects to Zoom and even to your Gmail account, your calendar. Okay. The great thing whenever you pay is that you automatically can set this with a reminder and with the thank you, thank you follow-up. And those of you who sell a service, something, something that I do is if I met with that person today, I have an automatic email that let's say it will go back to the client in two days and will say, thank you for meeting. It was great. If you want more information, here's my website. If you want to start your coaching um, program, this is what you need to do and all of that information, okay? So basically it's to have that um, assistant, I will say, helping you booking um, your different, I don't know, meetings, possible client, prospects, all of that, okay? I love Calendly, you have saved me so much time and it's something that you can even do on your cell phone, okay? So that's with the calendar. And whenever we're talking about billing, you can use your QuickBooks, your PayPal, 
there's other things that you can use. And so, for example, those of you who are freelancers and people sometimes will say, um, you know what, I don't know how much to charge per hour or I'm going to charge 25, 35, 45 dollars per hour. But how am I going to keep track on the amount of time that I'm spending with this client? Hours keeper. OK, it's a great thing to do. Basically, here you have a dashboard. You can include your clients, the pay period. You can do invoices and see reports. OK, again, there's a free version and a premium version. I'm not using this one. OK, but I do like to share it. Um, but what I like about this one is I don't know you, but sometimes I'm working on a client. I don't want to lose track of the time frame that I have because I already maybe um, send them a proposal. So I track my time here. OK, so I say, you know what? I spend three, four hours. This is what I should be charging. This is how much time I'm spending with the client in an hour. Bianca, you should be done because I don't know if this happens to you. I get distracted with a cell phone. If you're working from home and you have kids is worst, right? Um, so be sure that whenever you're working with a client, you use this. Yes, Andrea, usually all the apps, whenever you use the um, premium version, it has more, um, how can I say, more features, right? You can use maybe the invoices and send it through that, um, through the same um, app. So you will have to double check what works better for you, okay? Um, I always recommend start with a free version, okay? So you can see if this is the right fit for you, okay? Um, so this is with hours keeper I'm, and look, this is the invoicing. I just made an example here. So you have an idea. The great thing is that if you're doing, you're working maybe on the road, you can do this from your phone. Okay. And you can have all of this set. Okay. So that's an example of it, of how people will see. I put a picture, but you can do your business logo. Okay. Another one, HoneyBook. Okay. HoneyBook kind of do the same thing, okay? But also, this one has the time tracker and the task. What I do in Todoist, HoneyBook, basically what they try to do is they try to um, compensate or have all the different apps and gadgets that other people or other apps have, okay? They have invoicing, they have the project, you can do what Todoist does, um, all of that information in one. My recommendation, since many of you, um, I, I don't see the name, but I'll, I'll go back. Um, you have it in your, oh my God, I forgot the workbook. But the other one is HoneyBook and Hours Keeper, okay? Hours Keeper is the other one, okay? Thank you, Stacey. So this is the thing. I'm going to give you a little hint. Usually, many of these apps, they throw a great sale um, during Christmas. OK, why? Because they know businesses are looking um, to use different apps. OK, so check on Cyber Monday, check during Christmas. Many of them throw big, huge deals, cutting the prices. OK, so that's something to pay attention to. So I'm going to give you another hint of things that you should have in your brand. OK, that it's organization. It helps you sell fast and have a good experience with your client. And it's a service menu. Whenever you go to a restaurant, they have a menu. You can either have a QR code. Nowadays, with because of the COVID, um, they have that um, QR code. So my question is, if you don't have a website, how people will know the different services that you have? So something that you can do is in Canva, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of mine um i have my menu right and you'll see it okay it's in spanish because mainly my clients um speak spanish but here they are i offer only three services i only offer three services one is helping people how they can use their brand to find a good job that job that they want how they can use your brand to create that entrepreneurship, right? Their business. And then I help teams look for that career. Three services. That's it. 
And you might say, so this is Godiva Hershey. This is a blend of Hershey and Godiva, but I have another Godiva, Godiva Premium that is for companies. I work with different um, nonprofits and profit companies um, doing team buildings, career development plans, and their service is different, okay? Right now I'm in Puerto Rico, um, have been like two, this is my third week. I'm working with um, different companies doing team building. So they have a different menu, okay? And you should have the pricing here, how they can contact you. All of that, you should have that ready in your Canva because then you can just download this as a picture or PDF and send that, okay? So everybody should be thinking of this. And another thing is proposals. Um, recently, I had an, a bad experience with someone. Um, I, I wanted to market my book and I told the person, you know what? Do you have a proposal on what you offer? And you know what the person told me? You know what? I don't have the time right now because I'm working with other clients and your book is not coming out until a month. So you can wait and I'll send you that. And for me, it was like, really? I can wait, you're working with other clients and you have been marketing books for more than five, six years, you should have had that proposal ready for me. Because if you're doing this for many years, this should be done. You should, your clients should not be waiting. Yes. So proposals, have them ready. I have different proposals because I offer different things. I have clients who are individuals and companies. These are for workshops and conferences. Okay, I have them in English because mainly um, this is what I, I tend to do with my clients. And you remember that we were talking like we all, I offer a lot of services. I try to focus on specific um, workshops, how to be an ambassador of your personal brand. You took part of that, um, our first part series, seven strategies for being a resilient leader, how to position and manage your brand. And if you see, there's the title, a brief description, okay? And that's it. And in here it explains, right? How you can contact me, how the workshops will be, all of that information. And if you see many of the things that I'm showing you, you'll see my picture always in action. You need to invest in that, okay? That will be a great thing to do because they can see your projection that's part of your image that you have done this before, okay? And I know if you're starting, you might say, I don't have the people, I don't have um, the way to do that. It, it takes time, okay? And that's okay. We are learning in the process. I didn't have this. And you know what's the interesting, interesting part? I didn't have any mentor explaining all of these things to me. I have learned it on my own, okay? So, um, thank you, Stacy, about the book. Yes, so far we have had um, good reviews um, and good deals over here. If I have time, I'll share with you guys what I'm doing. So always remember that, have the proposals ready, okay? Or at least a draft about what you're going to offer. So another example that I'm gonna show you is this one. Let me, let me go here, okay? Services, okay? This is a, another one that I have is services. And basically here is explaining what I do with people. If someone tells me, Bianca, I want your service. I'm a professional. I'm, I want to create my business or I want to fulfill my career. I have here, okay, their information. And you know what? You might say, but it's in Spanish. You know what? I do the translation like that, but at least is done the, how will you say it? The concept is done, okay? I explain here in the first part, what is the concept of the service? How um, it is done, okay? What I'm gonna do with the person? How is the designing phase? How it works, okay? How much it costs, okay? What I offer them, what is my promise? And a little bit of me, okay? So I keep doing the same. Yes, Stacy, I will do one in English. I do have one in English. Is that um, this workshop, I have done it many times in Spanish. So I think the link stayed in the Spanish per, um, version. But you should have this already. And you might say, you know what? I only offered t-shirts. Still, you should have something like this. People want to see. You need to explain to people step by step. It has to be dummy proof. 
okay? It has to be simple for people to follow and understand, okay? That's really important. So now with that information, okay, the question is how can I connect with people? And I like this um, phrase that says, branding is the process of connecting a good strategy with good creativity. That's what is going to set us apart from others. So this is the thing, how can we do that? Okay, presentations. You might say, but I only sell t-shirts, but maybe you have to create a proposal and go to a company and present something. Or even you wanna be out there and have a nice slide or something like that. I'm not gonna go through all of these. You have this on your worksheet, okay? Just Google these or, and I know Google will give you the link, okay? And this is what you're going to do. If you want nice presentations, something like this, and you might say, you know what? I don't know how to do presentations or animations or do the colors and all of those little things. There's different things that you can do. All of these different um, places you can go to, and some of them are free. Some of them you will have to pay. But my recommendation, many of them are free, like slides, um, go oppt.com, Slide Carnival, Slide Model. I know Slide Model only lets you download a certain amount of PowerPoints, maybe per day or per month, okay? Um, but there are good ways for you to create something creative and pretty. Even Canva has um, presentation, PowerPoint presentations, and you can use those too. Just download them as a picture or PDF. You can even download them as a PowerPoint, okay? But the unique part of it is if we want a brand to stand out from the others, you have to go to unique places and do unique things. And all of these different um, places that I'm telling you, they have good um, creativity um, templates. Another thing that you can do is SlideShare, okay? I don't know how many of you have used SlideShare, but SlideShare, is it used to be it, it is free okay but slideshare basically is a place where you share your slides and you might ask why i need to share my slides if you want to share knowledge which the best brands share knowledge share a slide with information about why they have to buy cotton t-shirts why their t-shirts have to be branded why education is important three steps on doing this slide share basically does the following thing okay and i'm gonna show you what it does okay i used to use this long ago and this was my first company so basically here on slide share um i have a slide on what was my service what people could find what it was okay so this is the thing about SlideShare. SlideShare is part of LinkedIn, okay? And for example, if you create a really cool slide, people can use that sl a slide and clip it. And you might say, why I need this? Because if you're using your brand, your logo, your information, and somebody else clip it, it's like Pinterest, somebody else take it, they will take it, but your information is there, okay? And especially those of you who live because or have a brand or a service that is more based on knowledge, SlideShare is a great way to do that. You can even um, use part of your blog information and include that here and create slides for people to use it. But this is the thing for people to use that slide, it has to be cute, okay? So use, my recommendation is to use um, some of the examples that I gave you on presentations. Images, be careful using images. Okay, you can get a really good lawsuit. I think I have a lawyer's a notary, right? But be careful with pictures. That's why whenever I do workshops or events, I take pictures. I bring a photographer, I pay for an hour, take pictures as much as you can. I do give a release um, of information and confidentiality and image release for people. And I use those. Why? Because sometimes you use pictures that um, have certain... Um, blockage or dirt, not your own, and you can get sued. So where can you get free pictures? Free pick on patch, pick wizard. Be careful. Sometimes they will say, you know what? Give credit to the photographer. Okay. So be careful on that. If you're working on your blog, Flipboard, HubSpot blog, 
And there's a great um, tool that is a topic generator. I'm gonna explain it to you um, because it gives you idea on what to write on your blog. And I will explain that a little bit now. And I know we're almost on time. And for those who want to create blogs or even you can use this for your social media and content. I don't know what to write. So blog ideas generators, this is free, okay? Look what HubSpot um, has done. I don't know how many of you use HubSpot, but it has many tools, even an email signature, which is really cute. So I want more blog ideas and I work with career. So I'm gonna add it. I work with resume, let's say. I work with branding. I'm gonna type all those keywords, right? I work with leader leadership, let's do that. Okay, and I'm gonna tell them I have four, I'm gonna add another one. And let's say, I'm gonna add another one. I'm lost on that, ah, entrepreneurship. Okay, add. And I'm gonna click here, give me blog ideas. Okay, you can unlock this one, it will cost you, okay? Um, but this one is giving you an idea of quick blog ideas. Will resume ever rule the world? And you can change it, okay? The next big thing in branding. These are topics or let's say titles that capture people's attention, right? Leadership explained in fewer than 140 characters. This week, top stories about entrepreneurship. So it's giving you an idea on what to write. And I even think that the unlocking is free. Let me just be sure. Yeah, you just have to give the information. Look, okay. So I think that this is a great way to get content, to have ideas on what you wanna write, okay? So I hope that you are taking notes and going like, oh, okay, I, I can do this. Um, this is just a great way to do or an idea that I can start working on, on my next blog. So I wanna go back here and how we can connect with your brand and we're almost finishing, okay? And it's important for you to have an objective. The best brands are the ones who connect emotionally. And I always recommend using the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals. I don't know how many of you have heard of it, okay? And this is how it looks, okay? And the UN have 17 global goals. And basically what they're saying is that we need to work with these, okay? And it has many videos on YouTube. You can learn more about this. I always say the best brands are the ones who are committed with the community. So ask yourself, my brand, the message, how can I connect with people? What is that? that I can offer and connect with people and help also the world. So maybe throughout your brand, you can um, find a connection with poverty, hunger, good health and well-being. okay? This not work in economic growth. A goal that I tend to use a lot is the 17, partnership for the goals. And basically the partnership for the goals is saying that in order to have a better world, we have to unite ourselves. The government is not gonna do this on their own. So businesses, communities, people, they need to connect and create new things. And I tend to do this with a lot of companies and people, connect to see what else we can do, okay? Another one that I have a commitment is with um, education, okay? Um, I work with universities, developing curriculums, projects, in order to educate people. My book is about educating people on how the job market is changing and what we need to do and know. So it is a great way to create a brand that is committed to the world, to the people, to the community, okay? Perfect, Gainer. Thank you for that information that the, um, that per Gainer is registered with that. So think how my brand can contribute to the world, okay? And to finish, I'm gonna give you a quick bonus, okay? Your brand will evolve, will change, okay? Something that you can do is come here to the future of skills, okay? And learn a little bit more on how the world will change, what skills you should need in the future. I'm not gonna click enter because I wanna finish with something very important that I know you will like, but go here to the future of skills, okay? 
and have the experience to see what skills you might need in 2030. Okay, depending on your um, career on the business that you have. It's a really great exercise. And I want to end with this phrase, success doesn't just happen, it is planned. And I know that many of you told me there's a lot to do, right? Branding and strategy and marketing. So an example of how you can do this is to create your strategy, have an objective. My objective this year is to sell my book. For that, I have to define my audience. And for now, my audience is people who are transitioning, professional, freelancers, everyone who's looking for career growth, right? And I have to start thinking, what is that content that I wanna share, right? How I want people to see me. So I decide that I'm gonna do one blog per month, right? I'm gonna share six of those blogs on LinkedIn Pulse, which is a blog platform that they have and is free. I'm gonna do one video per month on YouTube and I can do between six to 10 Facebook lives or Instagram lives. And you know what is the thing with those lives? You can use the same topic of the blog. You don't have to recreate anything, okay? And whenever you do a Facebook live or YouTube live or YouTube, talk about a specific topic and then tell them, you know what? If you want more information, go to my blog, okay? Social media. For that, you need a Canva calendar. Create a Canva calendar that it guides you on what you have to do. I'm going to show you in a brief an example. Think of what are those things that you can give away from your brand, from your product, okay? I don't have a tangible product. Now I have the book. But for example, my target this year is five giveaways in a year. I can give away, in my case, since I'm a freelancer, is service to PDFs on a specific topic, how to do something. People can download that. Two master classes. I already have one, which has worked a lot. Um, and maybe one video explaining something. And basically what we do with these type of things, with the giveaways, you say, I give something to the people. What do I get back? Well, if you have MailChimp or other platforms, you get their information, email address, okay? So they're in your mailing list, okay? And it's important whenever you start working with your strategy to have keywords. Okay, this is part of your niche. In my niche, keywords are career, resume, LinkedIn, leadership, employability, personal brand, emotional salary. Those are keywords for me that are important for me to use. And it gives me an idea of the content that I want to create, okay? If you want, you can take a screenshot on this, okay? And basically this is kind of um, what you have on your last page, right? The brand strategy, you have that there. And I'm going to show you an example of the Canva calendar that I did. Something for me is, is hard to like think what I'm going to post today. So I have like a hashtag on Mondays is motivation Monday. So what I'm going to do, maybe a phrase, maybe a news that is motivational news, maybe a video about me or, or another person or any idea that brings motivation. Tip Tuesday. I love Tip Tuesday. I do tips on personal branding, leadership, career, apps that people can use. Like all of this class, maybe a tip Tuesday, I have content for more than a month sharing apps. Wednesday is going to be about my book, behind the scenes, promotion, no tips, all of that. On Thursday, I can do a little bit about me so people can know a little bit about what I do. Okay. Um, and I'll talk to Tasha. If you guys give me a little bit of a chance, Tasha, maybe I can share the presentation and you you can send it um throughout the end of the week okay i'm gonna make that commitment with you okay are we good guys because i'm here um, i'm reading your comments okay then on fridays you get to the side and again i created this um content of my calendar based on my brand you get to decide how you want to do yours okay but this is just an example but it gives me organization which I need, okay? So comments, question, let me know on the chat. I know we're, we're, be, we're, no, we're not behind. I, I got you, it's 12.04. So I wanna um, be ending today with any comments, any questions. And if I can't answer the questions right now, I know that we're gonna have a next session um, and maybe I can include other things, but 
my main goal was to give you out today different apps, different ideas on how you can increase your brand without a budget. Um, sometimes we don't think about all these little things that can help us, especially have an experience, a great experience, the client with our service. So I'm hearing, I'm, I'm reading here on the chat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Keisha. I hope that you found value on this. Okay. Perfect. Um, Cleo Vivas. Perfect. I'm glad on that. I'll keep reading your um, comments. I want to end with this phrase from Eleanor Roosevelt. It takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. So we have to plan, right? What is our brand strategy? And we're on time, okay, to do that. So how can we continue doing this? What we need to do? Um, here you have the different um, two more workshops that we're going to be working on, August 24th four reasons why your services are not selling. And September 21st, the entrepreneur mindset, how self-knowledge is the key to a successful business. I hope you are going to be part of that one too. And I want to answer Lisa, how about protecting your own pictures on your media so someone else cannot use them? That's really a good question, Andrea. I haven't done so, but you know what? I do have a photographer that whenever she takes some of the pictures, she has like a stamp on it um, with her information that if people use that, um, they know it was um, somebody else's picture. Okay. Like a watermark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone else. I keep, I will keep reading on the chat. I hope you find value on this. I hope you work on this. Um, one thing is that sometimes we come to the workshops and we get a lot of information and I know it's overwhelming. Just one step up at a time, okay? You don't have to do everything at the same time. Just ask yourself, what is the most important thing? What I can do first, and then you continue. Andrea, I believe that you can go to Eventbrite. Maybe Tasha, you can guide us on that on how they can register for the additional workshops? Yes, I'll be doing that. Um, are you ready to close out? Yes, I'm ready, Tasha. All right. So I'll be placing a few links in the chat. Uh, all right. I do believe, okay. So this one is to all, of, oh, I put your contact information here first. All right, so this is to Eventbrite, and this will allow you to see all of the um, upcoming workshops that we do have. Um, our prior recorded trainings, you may find those, let's see. One quick second to pull that up because we've moved the video. So give me one quick okay. second. All right, training videos can be found here. I am in the process of still um, editing videos as well as, excuse me, as well as uploading them into our um, training or on demand training web website. Um, the link that I just placed into the chat, you will find it there. Um, if you are not on our newsletter, our mailing list, make sure that you do. Um, let's see. Our newsletter can be found at this link here. Um, if you are actually on a computer and you want to save the chat, um, in the chat window to the right of file, the word file, if you're on a window system, um, to the right of file, you'll see the three dots. You'll click on the three dots and then you'll see a dialog dialogue box that will open up that says save chat. You can click on that and it will save the chat in your documents folder under Zoom and under today's date, along with the name of the work website, um, the workshop, excuse me. Um, as far as any other um, computers like the Mac or either the Chrome, you may need to take a screenshot of everything else. Um, you can activate the links and just keep the browser window open. As far as any additionals, let's see. Our YouTube channel, some of the training videos may be found here as well. 
And the link is also in the chat. And um, that is about it. So um, we appreciate each and every one of you for coming to the workshop today. If you have not checked in, if you were a little late or have not verified your name with me um, so that I can check you in, those who have been checked in, I will make sure that once Bianca does get, send us the PowerPoints, you will receive those. So, all right, you want to go ahead and close out? Yes, I just want to thank everyone for your time. And again, don't get overwhelmed. Do this on your own time. But the most important thing is to start your strategy and work on it. And if anyone need anything, I'm really reachable. So I'm here to help. Hope to see you soon.